In this video, we will look at SMIS integration and functionality for the EMC Extreme IO All Flash Array when using Microsoft System Center Virtual Machine Manager. This applies to both System Center 2012 and 2016, and the capabilities are specific to the latest Extreme IO software release, July 2016. This video will show the steps involved in configuration and setup, certificate management, storage volume administration through both SCVMM and also through PowerShell. Firstly, we look at our System Center VMM management screen. As you can see, we have a storage classification provider already created. This is named Platinum, but as shown, there are no storage providers yet present. Before we can add a storage provider, we will first need to put the appropriate users in place. A total of three users will be required. We will begin with a designated user for the Ecom server, which is embedded within the Extreme IO management server. The Ecom server can be accessed using the XMS address and specifying communication on port 5989. The URL is shown on screen and access credentials are available in the latest Extreme IO user guides. Once logged in, choose Add User and specify the desired name and password. In this case, we already have the user created. Further changes to any existing user can be made through the Modify User link already shown. Once done, log out. Secondly, we add the user to the XMS. This is done here using the GUI and accessing system administration, user, ad user administration, and then security. As seen, our SCVMM user, which we will use for SMIS, is already created. A new user could be created using the Add button as shown. Next, a Run As Account will be added to our VMM instance. This can be done via settings and choosing Run As Accounts. As seen, our SMIS user, already named SCVMM, is already in place. It should be noted that in this demo, we will be using local authentication for our SMIS-related activities. But of course, LDAP could be used with full setup instructions available in the latest user guides. For Microsoft System Center and Ecom to successfully complete the certificate handshake as part of the HTTPS connection, the Microsoft Client Certificate must be imported into the Ecom Trust Store. In order to do this, first export the Microsoft Certificate using Microsoft's Management Console. Once opened, choose Add Remove Snap-in Certificates, pick Computer Account, then Local Computer, then select the Personal Certificate and export using a Base64 encoded .ceor file. Once saved to an accessible location, open the cert in your text editor of choice and copy the entire contents of the file. From here, we will then log back into the Ecom server, access SSL certificate management, and then choose option 3, import CA certificate file. Paste the previously copied content and choose to submit the certificate, then log back out. Two other prerequisites need to be in place to ensure secure communication across this solution. Firstly, .NET 4.6 should be installed, the file shown here. And secondly, a registry entry will need to be added on the VMM server. This is shown here and is also documented in Microsoft KB 2960358. With these steps completed, we can now add our Extreme IO storage array to the storage providers managed via SMIS within Microsoft System Center VMM. Choose to add SAN and NAS devices managed by an SMIS provider. Enter the XMS IP or fully qualified name. Ensure SSL and port 5989 are being used. Choose the SMIS specific run as account and then click next. At this point, we should be able to see our XBIC cluster. Choose it, click Next, and continue by adding the cluster and specifying the desired storage classification for this pool. Once the VMM job completes, we should be able to see our storage provider within the VMM Fabric Resources tab. Individual LUNs can then be queried where you can identify unit IDs, capacity points, snapshot info, as well as any mapped initiators, shown here. Okay. 
with everything now in place, we can create storage volumes on the array from the VMM console itself. Go to Add Resources, Create Logical Unit, specify the necessary information and then click OK. The new LUN should now be visible within VMM and also on the XMS if we check back. And shown here, our newly created LUN is named SMIS Test LUN and is of 111 gigabytes in size. Deleting a LUN is just as simple. Choose the desired volume and then select to remove using the right click option. The LUN will be removed from the VMM console and also if we check back we will see it removed also from the XMS. Lastly, this demo will verify PowerShell functionality, which can be used in place of the manual operations typically carried out on the VMM console. Before PowerShell can be used, the Windows feature called Windows Standard Based Storage Management needs to be in place. This can be done using Server Manager from the VMM server as shown here. As seen, this feature has already been added on this server. With all the necessary pieces now in place, we can instigate PowerShell commandlets using an elevated PowerShell command line. From here, we can examine the connected storage providers and the connected storage subsystems. We can also pull the available storage pools, and then using the unique ID for that storage pool, we can create storage volumes to be used within the setup using the new virtual disk option. As seen here, and post typo related errors, our storage volume is created and then can be verified to be in place on both the VMM console and the XMS itself. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your time and your attention. I do hope you found this video and demo informative. Best wishes from all the Extreme IO team.